Uh, so today I'm just going to be briefly introducing uh, the case study that we did on Unpack Caster at Tessafon, sort of highlighting uh, the importance of the monument and some of the sort of modern challenges that it's facing uh, today. So Takasha, often called Tessaphon, um, so the word Tessaphon actually refers to sort of the ancient city as a whole, not just the remains of the palace that we see today. Uh, it's probably very familiar to many of you. Uh, the iconic arch is one of the largest single span brick arches in the world. Um, you know, parts of the palace have been, have, have been destroyed, but the brick arch and it, its flanking facades still remain in sort of this iconic image of the site. Uh, the, the palace itself, Takasha, was located within a really dense urban area in antiquity, uh, where successive cities such as Tessaphon and Seleucia and Bayardashir once flanked both sides of the Tigris River. Uh, the monument, uh, constructed in the Sasanian period, so we're talking between the 3rd and 7th centuries AD, and the Sasanian Empire was one of the sort of largest territorial empires in the ancient world, extending from what is now you know, Syria in the west, potentially all the way to the Indus in the east. And the Sasanian capital of, of Tessaphon, it really derived its wealth from its agriculturally productive hinterland, considered one of the sort of bread baskets of the Sasanian empire. So that's just to give you a bit of background on the site itself. So like a lot of, of ancient monuments, uh, Takasra is facing numerous challenges in our modern world. And today I'm just going to briefly highlight a few that we recorded as part of the Amina CPF uh, training in endangered archaeology with employees of the State Board of Antiquities and Heritage um, in our visit to the site there in 2019. So as you can imagine, over the last hundred years or so, uh, we can see really significant uh, increases in both modern settlement and agriculture in the area around the monument. And so while not directly necessarily impacting the arch, um, it really does have an impact on our broader understanding of archaeological remains in the wider area. So you can see this image actually from 1919, and you can see there's very little in the vicinity of the site. But if we look at a more modern image of, of Takasha, which you can see right here, we can see a whole plethora of you know, modern um, constructions and agriculture and stuff in the vicinity of the area. And this is something that I think a lot of sites uh, face in the MENA region. Um, as I, I can attest, you know, visiting Takasha is a really breathtaking experience um, and one I hope that will be available for future generations. But again, like many tourist destinations, however, um, tourism itself can present challenges for the management of the site. Um, a Takasra, for instance, a graffiti on the walls left by many of the visitors is, is one of these things that goes along with it being a touristic site and that we need to think about how to preserve for the future um, and, and just try to uh, encourage people to not necessarily leave graffiti on the walls. Um, modern conservation, I mean, so one other modern challenge has also been conservation of the site. Um, so probably the most urgent challenge facing the monument today is the threat of the collapse of the arch itself. Um, when we were there visiting the site in 2019, some of the, the conservation material applied to the underside of the arch had begun to collapse, um, which you can see in this image here. And this is really probably, like I said, the, the, the most, the most, uh, the largest threat to this to this monument today. However, um, in really excellent news, uh, we know that emergency conservation project is now being undertaken uh, by the University of Pennsylvania, um, as well as ICANEM, I think is involved as well as this this Iraqi State Board of Antiquities and Heritage, and it's being supported by Alice as well. So this is actually great news and providing um, much needed sort of emergency conservation to, to the site to preserve it for uh, future generations. So really documentation of the condition of Takasra through the use of satellite imagery, historical photographs, and continued monitoring through you know, on-site condition assessments is really crucial to preserving the spectacular site uh, for future generations. Um, 
And so for this, this part of the exhibition, which I hope you will spend some time perusing, we were able to use some really fantastic historical sources to track the condition of the site over more than 100 years. The earliest impression we were able to access from the 1880s shows, you know, the site prior to the collapse, actually, of one of the facades that was later reconstructed due to some flooding. Um, however, what's been really fantastic is that we've been able to incorporate some amazing photographs of the site uh, taken in 1919 by Gertrude Bell um, into the, the 3D models that have been constructed by Ikenim. So you can actually look at the site and see how it's changed over the course of over 100 years. Um, and these great historical photographs, they come courtesy of the Gertrude Bell Archive um, at Newcastle University. So now, actually, I just wanted to briefly hand over to my colleague, Mark Jackson, um, who's from the Gertrude Bell Archive at Newcastle, to tell you a little bit more about the photographs themselves and this amazing resource. So Mark. If you happen to to be able to yes, introduce I'm here. yourself, excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Kristen. Um, we were delighted that the photographs from the Gertrude Bell Archive at Newcastle University could be used as sources of evidence and tools um, for this project. The Gertrude Bell Archive covers the period from 1874 until 1926. Uh, it consists of letters, diaries, reports and nearly 8,000 photographs taken between 1899 and 1926 around the world, but mostly in the Ottoman Empire before World War I. In 2017, the Gertrude Bell Archive became the second university-based archive in Britain to become a UNESCO International Memory of the World. The inscription acknowledges this priceless and, and unparalleled source of documentary heritage for the important period of societal change at the end of the Ottoman Empire and the creation of the modern Middle East. And the, the archive captures um, the lives and cultural contexts of multiple ethnic and religious groups living in the early 20th century. Bell's photographs of places represent a priceless record of buildings and people and, um, and landscapes, places they continue to have international significance and meaning um, for people today. And as time goes by, the, the photographs take on new significance as, as, as events change. All the photographs have been available online for some 20 years, but in the last two years, we've been re-scanning all the original negatives. Um, and we're, we're delighted that this project has combined some of our new high quality digital images with new digital scans of, of, of Tesafron. So um, we're always looking for new projects and new collaborations. So if you think the archive might be helpful for work that you're doing, um, I do hope you'll be in touch with us and um, um, please, please email me or, 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 or get in touch through the archive website. Thank you very much.